Hi everyone, my name's Emma. I'm now a final year medical student and I've been looking through some of my old footage and I filmed this clip back when I was writing my final exams for third year. I never turned it into a vlog or anything, but I think it has some sort of important messaging around um, failure, perfectionism, and that kind of mindset that I was in during exams. And so I thought I would share it with all of you here anyways. Um, bit rambly, so grab a snack, glass of water. It's not too long um, and stick with me because I think it is a um, really important lesson that I had to learn that I wish maybe I had learned sooner. So enjoy <laughs> and comment down below. Um, give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe. So I just finished the first portion of our written exam and I kind of just wanted to sit down and debrief it a little bit. I finished about a half hour early, which is pretty normal for me. I have learned that it's really bad for me to kind of like double check and go through. So I check that things are answered um, and I flag going through the questions that I'm unsure about and I check those, but any question that I was confident in, I just leave because if I touch it too many times, I will change to the wrong answer. Um, and then I can't sit there and just wait for the time to tick down. So I usually try to leave if I'm done before the um, lockdown period where you can't leave. So I'm done early, all my friends are still in there. Um, and I just kind of wanted to debrief. Maybe I'll see if I can find a better spot. Is this better? I don't know. I feel like you can see me better and you can see my pretty campus behind me. Um, so yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how I feel in that exam. So for us, <laughs> Um, for us in third year, we have a formative written exam because we will have a mid-year hurdle exam in fourth year that we have to pass. This exam is truly formative. It is 0% of our uni transcript. It goes on our portfolio, but, you know, as long as we can show that we've improved or made an effort to improve from the third year to the fourth year one, then you can kind of defend any sort of mark in it. Um, and what I realized just writing that exam is there's a lot in clinical medicine where you can do one thing and the other at the same time. So for example, there was a presentation of a large for gestational age baby that was born and at 10 minutes was having like a little bit of difficulty breathing, but was like, okay. And the question was, you know, all the options that I narrowed it down to was get a BGL or start CPAP. And it fit the clinical picture for CPAP, but you'd also want the BGL to get to the bottom of what you're gonna do. So in a multiple choice exam, that doesn't narrow down well. Obviously there's a choice that you're going to do to like save baby, like you have to, at least I think, um, start the CPAP and then get the BGL, right? Um, but like you could argue that you'd get the BGL because it'll take two seconds and then you do the C like there's situations in clinical medicine where you are going to do multiple things at once. Another example was you're a GP and what would you do first? And it was like different blood tests. And like, well, I would order multiple of these blood tests and get the patient to go do the relevant x-ray. So I guess I'm kind of debriefing one for myself because you know, you spend all of this time trying to get into medicine and requiring perfection to get in there. And then you're doing this amazing growth during med school and sort of trying to unwire that perfection. And you're realizing that you can't know everything. You will never know everything. What you need to know is to be safe. And a lot of safety can't be boiled down to a multiple choice question, um, which I think my faculty knows. I think they actually did pretty well with some of the questions that it was very clear, the clinical picture, and they were clearly looking for like the best test to determine diagnosis, not all of the tests that you would do. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's really interesting because I really had a hard time preparing for this test because I had spent so long um, in the last couple of years, like detaching my self-worth from grades, which I think is amazing. And, you know, go to therapy or work through that yourself if you can, because if you attach your worth to your academic success and you're going into a field where there will always be more to know, you will never have a self actualized sense of self-worth and obviously that's really really important um so i wish i like wrote down what to talk about um so i had a hard time preparing for this formative test because the faculty didn't give us a lot of information about what would be on it i knew it was purely formative so it, in a way 
it's almost a good gauge of learning and a good gauge of what do I need to learn before I graduate. Um, I didn't feel that background um, push, like invalid push of I need to know this to be good and to be worthy because I've worked through that, which is amazing. Um, and then you kind of get into a spiral of why don't I care? <laughs> um, and so it was kind of nice. I obviously could have done better on that test and like future Emma is going to be annoyed at past Emma for not studying more. Um, but I don't know, I left the multiple choice still feeling like a safe clinician. So maybe I didn't know the exact order or exactly like the prediction, but I could see what needed to happen for the sake of diagnosis, for the sake of safety of the patient. And obviously that's gonna show an OSCE and that's gonna be more relevant to being an intern than being a specialist. Um, and yeah, so I guess I wanted to like kind of chat, maybe I'll turn this into a vlog of exam week and watch me process these emotions, but about how, um, I guess there's a few things. Detaching personal self-growth, their self-worth from exams and exam marks, how multiple choice testing really isn't the best predictor of clinically safe clinicians, I don't think, um, coming from a med student, so, you know, we can take that with a grain of salt. And that it's, it's okay to not care <laughs> about the results of a test um, as long as you know, in med school, you care about your general growth and your general knowledge, um, it's okay to have that reflection that this doesn't necessarily predict it best. Um, and yeah, um, so how am I feeling? Feeling a bit funny, I'm sitting literally in a windowsill. Um, feeling okay, like I don't think that's gonna be my best test of med school, but I, I don't think that that matters. Um, it doesn't impact my transcript, so applications um, for internship and stuff don't matter. It will be on my portfolio, but it will always be a point that I can speak to. I've had a really long two years um, and am personally like struggling with a bit of inattention and uh, burnout currently. So I think I could proudly look someone in the eye and kind of explain why I didn't do as well as previously. Um, and I think I'll do well in the OSCE because of all those things of being safe versus being specifically correct. Because um, it's always better to be safe than to anchor yourself to specific diagnoses because on paper, the answer is A, but in reality, you have to rule out B, C, D, and E as well. Um, so yeah, I guess I just had some thoughts, maybe thoughts that younger Emma needed to hear or maybe thoughts that you might need to hear um, if you're facing perfectionism, if you're facing self-worth in med school, burnout in med school. Um, it happens to all of us and you'll be okay, I guess. And one test, good or bad, does not a good doctor make. So don't hinge your self-worth or your um, progress on one faculty written exam. Obviously in the US, USMLE and stuff bears differently, unfortunately, um, but yeah. That's kind of my thoughts. <laughs> um, I have like 20 minutes until my friends get out of exam and then I think we have like an hour break. So I'm just gonna sit and eat some snacks. And